Hi, everybody. This is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, I send you love. All right. I had so many things um, that I wanted to talk about today. And I'm going to kind of incorporate um, a portion of what I left out of my 444 update of my last video. Anyway, that is. I want to add that into this video um, just so I'm not taking up too much time or because uh, I think the next video, if I were to do one for the 444, is going to be kind of brief. So that's why I'm going to add it into today's energetic update. And instead of um, doing anything other um, other than what I had planned, or anything else, excuse me, and I know I don't need to explain any of this, I should just continue on with the video, but um, I had planned on doing some other videos because of where I have already um gone what I have gone through uh, perhaps what you guys have experienced as well but I think it's important to give you a relationship into uh, where we are headed because what you're actually going through is probably has a lot to do with what's going on energetically so we're going to have um uh, let me get it correct here I believe it's going to be on this it's going to be the full moon of course, my phone is slow here, so bear with me on that. We're going to have um, the full moon on April the 16th, and the sun is still going to be in Aries, and the moon is going to be in Libra. Now, anytime we're dealing with moon energies, it deals with um, the earth elements, um, a more of our physical body and what we are going through from within the body. Um, also, it deals with um, water. The moon is going to work with water inside of our body. We have several types of water, not only water that we take in, um, but water also works through the blood to produce blood and blood flow but it also um, works with our sexual energy. So keep that in mind, no matter what. The sun in Aries, still, Aries um, is uh, deals with the ventricles of the brain. And I made a video about that, so we don't need to take up too much time about that. But also, as there is an above, there is also a below. If we have anything that is um, being um, worked on in the mind or the crown, the head, then we're also going to have a lower aspect that is going through some changes. There's an opposite to every single sign, like the sun and the moon, um, positive and negative. There's always things. So again, sexual energy. Um, so that is also um, in effect here. But since it's more of the sun in Aries, it's still dealing with um, the ventricles of the brain. Now, if we're going through... Um, Libra here. Libra signifies the balancing of the scales. Now, what really does that mean? Um, it is uh, the balancing act or where it actually takes place is within the heart. The heart is what uh, gives us true balance. And the heart is always going to tell our truth of our own equilibrium are we at peace and center but because of libra uh, we are working also with the kidneys and the bible talks about the heart and kidney relationship because um, the kidneys is one of the organs just one of the organs that helps purify but it also um, deals with the amount of water that is within our bodies do you see how this is fitting in um, with what I had just stated prior to this moment. Blood flows through our heart. Blood flows through our veins. Blood flows through our kidneys and everything and changes it into water. The amount of hydration. Our body is always going to tell our truth no matter what. Even if we are speaking about things or doing things, our body does not lie. So when we're looking at the scales of Libra, the scale of Libra, 
you are going to have um, two sides of the scale. Now the kidneys are at the bottom of that scale. Both of your kidneys have to be in complete balance. At the top um, where the scales are intersected at, it's your heart. The top of the point of the scale, so it's going to reach to um, your crown. That um, crown to root or the top of the scale that goes um, from the crown to the root is the base of your spine. Do you see how this is? Everything has to be incomplete and it's also the cross in equilibrium that also creates an X. The two scales intersect or connect at the heart creating an X of the hook and flail of the Egyptians, um, of the, that the Egyptians would also cross over the heart. Um, and then the cross that Christianity or many religions use, or other religions um, use, um, for Christianity of the cross that goes from the crown into the root and across the heart. This is the balancing scales of Libra and the testing of elements. Now in order to actually have complete balance, and this is going to make up the heart. The heart is where the soul um, can manifest itself into all of its purity because you accumulate all the 12 aspects of deity and it creates the thir 13th aspect. The 13th aspect opens up to um, the white purity, the ray of white purity, which uh, or the white lily flame as well, is what I have um, spoken about um, in another video. So every time we open up one or complete one, we, we create another one, um, and so on and so on. So you're going to have on both either sides of the scale the ray of our purity and then chastity. Now, purity and chastity, one's going to be red and one's going to be white. And I've been thinking about this for a long time here or a couple of weeks here and uh, meaning to of course talk about this but here I am we have this right here before us anyway when you combine red and white you get pink pink is just one flame that resides within the threefold flame you have pink gold and blue wisdom um, um, love, of course, and uh, strength, I think, is the other one. Um, please forgive me if, if I am misquoting that, but yes. So, in the bed, of course, it comes to the Father, um, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, this becomes the heart of God. If you're in complete equilibrium, if you have balanced yourself through the scales of Libra, especially through the kidneys. Water never lies. Blood never lies. Never does. Impurities are always going to be impure unless you purify it. Um, now, when we're talking about this, you know, purity and chastity, um, of course, when we look at um, the Virgin Mary, she became purified in her all of her element, elements to the point where she was able to birth the Christ. Her womb became purified. She was still married, or she was married to Jesus, uh, James, uh, excuse me, um, to um, uh, Joseph, excuse me. And um, so her heart was purified, and her womb was purified. And that's what we have to actually do within our own lives. Um, we're thinking about purity and stuff, um, you also want, if you can look at it in this perspective, every time that you have a reaction to something, every time that you think about something and it's negative or too um, attached to, that is trying to work within the purity of self. Pure thoughts, 
pure emotions, lead to pure expressions, lead to pure actions. You know, like if I am talking about something in the video, and it triggers you to think negatively or to come back with something, um, or you are definitely having an emotional response that is negative more specifically. But when you get to, um, I guess, a, a more steady rate of equilibrium, there isn't going to be any form of good or bad whatsoever. You know, like for this morning, my husband told me about a dream that he had. My past self would have already jumped to conclusions, even with him saying I had a dream and you were in it and um, I was a little bit scared, terrified, whatever, you know, he could have added. And I would have already had jumped to conclusions thinking, oh gosh, what took place? And it's just a, a dream. I know for myself, when I used to have bad dreams, um, when of course I was off, I wasn't balanced at all. I, I would have bad dreams about my husband having an affair, cheating on me, leaving me, abandoning me. And I would hold that for sometimes months. I actually was feeling as if he was doing it to me. But my emotions were off, which means that my um, hormones are off, and my body isn't filtering any of the toxins out properly. We have complete balance when, and this is not about what you're eating, okay? This has nothing to do about with what you are actually eating or drinking, because that's what the Bible says. It's not about what you eat or drink. It's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. Because what comes out of our mouth are those terrible thoughts and terrible emotions that have come from a result of a bad experience in some way, shape, or form. Those elements are the worst things. It's even like what you think about what you're eating. If you think something is going to harm you, you are already creating something destructive within you. And if you think something is greater than something, well, you're holding more value over anything else. It has to be equal. There can't be too much desire over one thing, and then there can't be too much resistance over another. There. To simplify it, too much desire is negative still. And too much resistance, refraining from, is negative still. A pack of Oreos, or whatever it is, that it has been, like mine used to be um, um, macaroni and cheese. And Stouffer's, more specifically, I could eat a family size one all on my own. It was just, I love mac and cheese. But my old self would tell me, oh, I took one bite. Oh, ugh, this is going to be bad for me. That's going to be bad for me. It's going to be bad for me. Yet I'm still eating it, and it's going to be really bad. You're already in a negative aspect, and you're taking in more negative stuff. You're creating something more negative. Too much liking of something um, creates an attachment to desiring this over something else. It has to be equal and you can't see anything with judgment at all. I'm going to eat whatever I feel I want or not really want is available to me. So, you know, if we're going out and everybody's eating some dessert, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have some dessert. I'm not going to say, I don't deserve that, or that's going to make me fat. I'm not going to eat this with everybody else. You know, you're, you're secluding yourself from an experience. You're refraining from an experience because you think it's bad. 
but then you can't overdo that experience either and create an attachment of of like if you have too much desire for something it there's too much euphoria you know you have that adrenaline kind of too much oh yeah like people who um are always you know reaching for adrenaline and they're pushing their limits this is just an example that i'm just thinking of right now you're pushing your limits and then they the next one that they go for has to be has to have even more excitement to it because now the the past um uh, euphoria that they were experiencing is not going to do them any good so they're always searching for something more and more and more or almost like a person who just can't settle down they're always searching for something else to do because they're really not facing what's actually what's actually taking place internally that is making them reach for more desirable things um, another example of of not being in alignment properly is that I am now living I'm still living in the same household that I once considered my prison my thoughts created my environment into a prison the same prison now is my castle my palace I love my home I love being here I'm still in the same room that before I thought I was just stuck in a same environment my same environment but I think differently about it I feel differently about it so now my experiences are reflecting that every time you have a negative thought about something and you're speaking about that every time you're telling somebody oh you can't eat this because it's bad for you oh you what you're doing here is bad and this is the right way already and, and that's about you it has nothing to do about the next, the other person it's about you and every time that you realize that you have the ability of allowing those of spirit to purify yourself so here's another example um, there are type of people who can get very angry very quickly over the smallest amount of things but then they can be the same people who are um, can get very angry very briefly, but they also turn it off very quickly. And the moment in a situation is gone, they've forgotten all about it. Now, these people will probably come and tell you, you know what, I, I, I understand, I can change things. I'm not, I don't hold it against people. But these are the same like people who become very heated again, very quickly. They're not actually having a realization as why they are becoming so heated. Why does, you know, something, the TV not working one day, make them so angry? They might be able to turn off that anger quickly, but there's not an understanding as to why that emotion is present. Now, it's not about the TV or the experience that is at hand. It's always about the emotion that's attached to it. If you can understand why you are experiencing an emotion, well, there's something internally that's off. Now I'm going to choose to be more kind and more love. You know, you might not still find the root cause of it, but you're healing it at that moment. And in time, when your mind is more open to understanding greater um, um, experiences you will have you can get to the root cause and figure it out your awareness will bring up probably the very first time that you were triggered by something so the Bible does talk about um, the kidneys the heart and the kidneys 
in the Bible, though, and depending on which version you are reading, so here in the King James Version, it talks in Psalm 7, 9, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Reigns is used in the in, um, instead of kidneys. So that is something that you should um, um, understand. And so um, this is in weighing of the heart, the kidneys are used. Because there's no lies in our own purification process and the amount of water. Because water is able to help fil filter out the entire blood system and create more blood, purified blood. So that's just one verse that I've, uh, I've just given to you, but there are several um, in relationship to the Bible. So in order to maintain balance, we have to really understand that with every action, there is going to be a reaction or every cause is going to be an effect. Just like there is light and then there is also going to be darkness. But even, or, or seasons, okay? Even in those situations, you hear all the time that people, well, I prefer spring, or I prefer summer, I prefer um, um, nighttime. There are some people who are just night owls. They really prefer to um, uh, stay up late because that's when the rest of the world is kind of sleeping and they can, be, they can have more peace and more quiet. That's still a form of preferring anything over something else. And it's still something that can keep us at an imbalance. You can't like one thing over another. Everything just is. Love keeps everything is. Enjoying the light and enjoying the dark. Enjoying activities and enjoying rest. Enjoying um, all seasons. All the time without holding greater attachment to anything. The seasons come, they change, there's a reason for every season. There's a reason for every season. And so I'll, I'm going to quit talking about it in that kind of um, perspective here and hopefully merge it as to what is actually taking place internally. You know, so I've mentioned all this stuff going on. And we're getting closer, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. But even as we get closer, we're still tapping into lower energies or um, the previous um, um, lesson. But you're also, wherever you are at in your lesson, you're mo moving upward. Every time you take a step forward, you're moving to the next lesson. But you're also still going to be at the lower level. So more specifically, you're, let's just say you're working with three levels at all given times. And as you get to the highest level, you are going to, um, and my brain is at a loss today, you're going to integrate and connect lower levels only if the heart has understanding or is in balance of that level. So, it, you know, and even though we have worked our way to um, Aries, which is the ventricles of the brain, which signifies we're at a higher level, right? You can't reach attainment at all until, because liquid, water, blood, is in the brain. The brain, all that liquid from the brain has to come right back down. It's going to reach into the heart going to go into the kidneys. It's going to go every single spot within our body through um, the left and right and central canal. Everything has to match within every single area before anything is complete. When it matches harmoniously through all three aspects there, then the heart becomes the heart of God. Or the diamond crystal heart or the diamond lotus heart whichever um, you have learned about the heart becomes the diamond that 
is the heart of God. The heart of God is going to match the mind of God. So many of us, when the heart has crystallized now, that's when the ascension flame actually is going to um, rise even further or become an ascension flame. Right now, the energy is just floating up and down, trying to still create equilibrium, opening up every single thing at a higher level. You won't, like I've already told you in one of my videos, I saw the, the I've seen the flame. The flame is actually the flame of your heart, but it's going to light um, the, the mind of God, your, your temple, your higher temple of the mind, because the reflection of the heart is going to reflect into the mind, and that's via the ascension flame. And so, um, because I am, um, as you can see, I've been having difficulty with words here lately. I can't remember simple words. And I hope to make another video in reference to it um, about this. So you might be having this type of fogginess or forgetfulness. Remember, because the old is, is washing away and the new is coming in. It's not that you're becoming ignorant at all. Something else, you have to have an experience. You have to have an experience. Day before yesterday, I had an experience of the greatest heartburn that I've ever had in a very, very long time. Now, for like 20 years or so, after I had my son, I had heartburn like you wouldn't believe every single day of my life, no matter what I ate. And so I was on prescription meds. And uh, something that I haven't been consecutively on, but we know that through our our process we have symptoms. Um, so sometimes I've had to take you know tums or other things, whatever it is, depending on how bad it is. Um, and that was that's what happened the other day, two days ago. I mean, from the time I woke up without eating anything, it was it was present, and and when I ate, it was present. I probably should have refrained from eating that day but I was also hungry so there's no right or wrong I did what I did and I don't hold any negativity it was just is but I got to the point that I I was throwing up before bed and I couldn't go to sleep I couldn't lay down until one o'clock the flame was just rising okay my heart was just on fire a terrible fire and, you know, we can be a person that's like, oh my gosh, I'm sick. I, what I ate was just terrible. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. All negative forms. Or you can learn to breathe it out. It's very uncomfortable. But you have to have an experience. No matter if it's a physical experience. No matter if it's a mental experience. Um, emotional experience. Or a physical experience in this reality you have to have an experience to know what's taking place that's just one thing that I've been going through here and by one o'clock in the morning it was gone I was fine the next day um, and I understood what was taking place so the central of your your pillar here is goes through your heart and um, a lot of times we're feeling this beautiful coolness sometimes we're, we're feeling coolness some people are feeling um, um heart attack type sensations through the heart all experiences um in relationship to the heart activation in some way shape or form um, beginning middle or end it doesn't matter the heart is going to have an experience for the most part my heart has been um very loving very peaceful um that Cool, burning like Ben Gay sensation of warmth and coolness but there's also been I've nothing that's been um, terrible but like a, a slight sharpness in there um, here recently again nothing painful just there um, so we're going to have sensations experiences and you have to connect those experiences and then 
for now here with this now that the crystal heart or hopefully yours is um, at that crystal stage um, the ascension flame can rise as one the um, the red and the white create the ascension flame the ruby ray and the white lily flame become create the ascension flame that rises um, so I hope this makes sense. I, I know that I am still, you know, my brain has lots of uh, fogginess, as you can tell throughout this video. But um, I hope that's made sense, that you can make some connection in your reality and understand it a little bit further. And of course, as the kidneys are, are um, balancing out, you can have some... Um, tenderness in the back of the of in the back of your body and also keep in mind that with the kidneys the adrenal glands sit just behind them when the adrenal glands are being affected the endocrine system remember um, also because of Aries even though Aries works with the the penile gland which is what a part of the endocrine system and melatonin is a major um, hormone that deals with the penile gland. Now the stabilization, so some people are wide awake all the time and some people are completely exhausted. It's a balancing of those hormones to make the perfect hormone of milk and honey. Milk and honey, a per perfect amount of milk and honey within our system so that we can sustain ourselves. And I wanted to go back to um, the 444 gateway and give you um, another um, different type of understanding that is in relationship um, that's taking place internally. And now we all know what what I have already spoke about with the 444 gateway is that 4 times 3 of course equals 12 when you have all 12 aspects of deity uh, residing within the heart you are able to create the 13th aspect, which is the the Christ, internal Christ. Um, and this, of course, is in relationship to creating the crystal diamond heart of the threefold flame. But now again, if we go a little bit deeper here with the 444, because I've been having lots of experiences um, in relationship to this, I wanted to give you greater understanding, and because perhaps you are too having the same experiences. Cranial nerve number four. This is the um, trochlear nerve. Trochlear nerve. And it starts in the brain stem, um, the lower part of the brain near the top of your spine. And it passes through four areas before reaching the superior oblique muscle, which connects to the eye. So you have a trochlear nucleus. This is part of the um, trochlear nerve nearest the brain. It is at the top of the brainstem. You're going to have the ambient cistern. And please excuse me if I am not pronouncing these names correctly. This is an area that is near the brain's outer protective tissue that is surrounded by dura mater. You have the cavernous sinus. It is a hollow space that allows blood from the brain to leave the body. It is in the middle of your skull. And then you have the orbit, the bone, the bony sac sockets of the skull that house the eyeballs. Um, this controls eye movement, the motor nerve that sends signals from the brain to the muscles, of course, um, which works with the ocular motor nerve and other eye muscles to control eye movement. And so I find it very interesting about the cavernous sinus. The cavernous sinus um, is the surrounding area of that surrounds, excuse me, it's the sinuses that surround the pituitary gland. It surrounds the pituitary gland. And so I have been having lots of this um, vibration and I have been clearing my sinus canals. 
uh, ever since I think the end of September consistently. I have really not had, well, it, it's gotten more peaceful, yes, and very airy, lots, but still, I, throughout the day, there are times where it is just completely clogged. I cannot breathe at least twice or three times um, throughout the day and night. I'll have a period where I just, it's just my nose clogged. But um, there are more than not, I have moments of this peaceful movement of energy just moving and just, just going. I can just feel this, um, a beautiful movement through my channel channels um, all along my sinuses, along the bridge of my nose, and, and, uh, and other places, of course, um, throughout my body. But this is very noticeable because it's right here on your face. And it's just moving, constantly moving and clearing. So I've been feeling that. Now the eighth cranial nerve is an auditory nerve. Now I've been feeling again, lots of um, inner ear kind of like tingling um, or tickling and movement. Um, also down into my throat, um, along my tongue, and also up towards... Um, along where, you know, your ear line is up to a little bit midway to um, the skull. Lots of those sensations. Ear changes, sounds, vibrations. And so I found it very interesting with that. Now when this is all, when this, this nerve isn't um, working properly and I, I've been thinking about that when it comes to my father-in-law, um, there are lots of vertigo and hearing loss um, and, and experiencing like false um, movements because our ears play an important role in our equilibrium, <coughs> excuse me, equilibrium. And here it is, balance through the scales of Libra. Um, and oftentimes an inflammation which again, we have lots of inflammation. You know, our sinuses affect how clogged our ears are as well. So that hooks us up to the fourth cranial nerve that I just spoke about. So, and then now cranial nerve number 12 is the um, hypoglossal nerve, which connects muscles to the tongue, um, which, um, allows for, of course, we need our tongue in order to speak and swallow. And so this, this nerve helps us to move our tongue um, in all positions or movements. And so I forgot to mention that in um, the um, eighth nerve, and did I even pass this nerve? which is the vestibulocular nerve, whatever it is, it's the eighth nerve. Um, this one attaches into the, um, the pons and medulla, and which is also um, ends in the vestibular nuclear complex, which is located in the floor of the fourth ventricle. All of this, you know, it really makes sense or really clicks because what have I been telling you about? Or, and you guys probably heard anyway, the medulla oblongata. You can't get to the medulla oblongata anyway and open that, um, which works through our sacred heart where the soul can seat itself within our heart or we can um, observe ourselves uh, until the palms, of course, has to be open. There's a communication gap that has to speak through each section of our body, of course, and to our brain. Um, one center is going to connect and speak to another. So this, and then the fourth ventricle um, is just one area through all of the ventricles of the, vein, the, the brain that connects itself, highly significant. So I have been having these experiences with all of that, those, these sensations within my, um, my skull. 
and I wanted to bring that into your awareness. But as we all know that every time there is um, anything going on within our um, skull, our brain, with the nerves, it's attaching to something else, whether it's a pituitary, pineal gland, um, the ventricles, all that is creating some, some form of hormone release or balance, which also is going to affect or connect internally. Because like that, the, what is it, the 12th cranial nerve, um, which attaches into our neck. You know, if there's, um, if you've had a stroke, which of course we all know that all of these nerves are going to eventually connect somewhere else along, along the body. There are people who end up having a stroke tend to not be able to speak because of this nerve. The communication branches have been destroyed through, the, through, through a stroke. So I thought it was very interesting and wanted to share this um, information with you guys. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.